Lord be with you. Happy Labor Day weekend. <laughs> no one ever knows how to respond when I say things like that. We have as our gospel lesson today two healing stories. One is Jesus healing the Syrophoenician woman's daughter of a of an unclean spirit. And the other story is um, opening the ears of a young man, and that's why the words Ephesa, be opened, are on our flowers. But we're going to concentrate on the Syrophoenician woman. You'll hear in the prayers the name Ron Giltner. You may not remember Ron and his family. Ron just had bypass surgery, has a very low-functioning heart, and uh, has been in intensive care. Uh, I baptized Ron and his two daughters about five years ago. Um, anyway, it, he's, uh, you'll hear his name in the prayers, as well as Wayne Myers, Wayne Meyer, who is our drummer at the 11 o'clock service, he had some heart complications. And if you remember, he's living with 20% heart function. Let us prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness that's on page three of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, whose name is majestic in all the earth, who rescues and heals in every time of trouble, who does all things well. Let us come before God seeking forgiveness and life. Steadfast and saving God, have mercy on us. We confess to you all the ways we turn from you and harm one another. In your compassion, forgive our sins and heal our hurts. Bring forth from us a harvest of righteousness, the fruits of gentleness and peacemaking, the sheaves of wisdom and justice, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, receive mercy and find grace in your time of need. Your transgressions are forgiven. God's love is healing, a healing balm for your wounds. Rejoice, for God raises you up to new life in Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Gracious God, throughout the ages you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord.
of an animal. Our psalm today is going to be sung by the psalm mates, a rare appearance of the psalm mates. Psalm 146, praise the Lord, praise the Lord my soul.
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know that he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose daughter, whose little daughter, had an unclean spirit, immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child laying in the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephetha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come forward. Good morning, everybody. How are you? <laughs> How do you like my picture? Isn't this a great picture? Hi. This is my favorite picture that's hanging in, excuse me, my favorite, my favorite picture is the picture of my grandchildren, but the one that was actually created by someone else, this is my favorite picture. It was painted by Norman Rockwell. And notice, all the people in it. A copy of this is actually a mosaic at the United Nations. If you notice, there's not a single person with the same skin color. They're all different tried to represent all the people of the world. And then he used a saying of Jesus. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's a golden rule. And we're supposed to treat everyone. Did you know that today is, for, for many, many churches, National End of Prejudice Sunday. So you're supposed to treat all those people as if God loves them. And if God loves them, what should we do? We should love them too, right? Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Let's have a prayer. Let's fold our hands and we'll pray. <laughs> Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for all people. We thank you that you love all people. Help us to love all people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
before we began, I'd like to share something that happened in our child care center. I mean, around the Independence Day, July 4th holiday, our students were asked, they were all asked to paint pictures. And of course, some of them weren't real great art, but they painted pictures and they were supposed to be uh, anything they wanted. Some of them were patriotic. They had flags on them and red, white, and blue. And then Melody Faraday, who is a, uh, the lead teacher in our infant's room, she has her son, she has two sons that are in the military, but a son who is deployed and his wife is deployed. And she sent all those pictures, the, the, our preschool children prayed over those pictures. And they sent them all to Kabul, Afghanistan, to um, Melody's daughter-in-law. And when she, when her, Kristen, her, her daughter, received them, she pasted them up on the walls and on the doors in the, uh, at the base. And everybody wanted a picture. When they saw those pictures, everybody wanted those pictures. And uh, so everyone took them and put them on their doors. She, she put it this way. Even the coalition forces, the Hungarians, Czechs, and various civilians wanted one for their doors. Then, this last week, Kristen sent a text to say, the Hungarians in particular were so touched they took some of the artwork in an aircraft with them on a mission. They asked the name of the school so that they could make a certificate and send it back. So I can't wait until we get our certificate. Won't that be cool? Let's see if those army people come through with it. Anyway, I thought that was neat and I thought you might like to hear that. The, t the teachers were very touched. Linda Nicholson, who is our director, was in tears when she shared that with us. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, by the way, we have a, we have a pastor in our midst. I'm going to have her come up <laughs> and preach the sermon. No, Jenny, I, I will not do that to you, but... <laughs> I've read stories where that actually happens. So I was told, before I went to seminary, always have a sermon prepared. Remember that, Jenny. <laughs> Carl Barth was a famous theologian of the last century. And there's a story told about him that back in World War I, he was a pastor of a small congregation in Switzerland, a small rural congregation, and his grandmother lived with him. And his grandmother, without him knowing about it, organized a Bible study to meet in his home. So he comes home one afternoon, and there is his grandmother with these women in their living room studying the Bible. So he greeted them, and said that's nice and went off to his study to do some work and he heard them talking and laughing all afternoon. So later at supper he said to his grandmother, well what are you studying in your Bible study? And she said, we're studying the book of Ezekiel. And he said, oh my, Ezekiel? That's a very difficult book and there's some really uh, troubling uh, parts of it that are hard to understand. And his grandmother said, that's all right. The parts we don't understand, we explain to each other. <laughs> so somebody explained to me why Jesus, our sweet Jesus, implied that this Syrophoenician woman who came to him desperately for help because her young daughter had an unclean spirit. Tell me why he 
implied that she was a dog. A lot depends on your Christology. Do you believe that Jesus was born immutable, all-powerful, all-known from the get-go? Or do you understand that Jesus had to go through a journey because he was truly human, truly divine, truly human, that he had to go through a journey, be tempted in all things such as we, struggle with who he was and what his relationship with God Almighty would be. Jesus, do you believe that he went through that journey? And maybe, that, you know, some say that it took him 30 years before he could start his ministry. That's when he heard Almighty God say to him, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased when he was baptized. And then, even then, Jesus on his way to the cross was still learning. God was still teaching him. And it's still, uh, many find that to be a comfort because Jesus went on that same journey we seem to be going on. Let's look at this woman. She is a Syrophoenician. Oh boy, I have slides. <laughs> Let's see if I can keep up with them. Uh, this woman is a Syrophoenician. It means she's a Gentile. Jesus is taking a long route. Uh, last night I spent too much time talking about Jesus and his fatigue. It seems he's trying to get away from people. He's been trying to get away from people ever since he heard that John the Baptist had died. He's trying to find a time alone, and he just can't do it. So now he goes up to Tyre, which is a Gentile territory, a non-Jewish territory. It's almost as if maybe if I get away from all the people and go into the Gentile territory, nobody will follow me. But he goes into a house and he tells his disciples, I do not want anyone to bother me. But the Syrophoenician woman, Greek woman, excuse me, Gentile woman, a worshiper of Baal. And Baal is a fertility god. And people worship fertility gods in all kinds of ways. There was very uh, utilitarian ways. Sometimes it was very in, in sensuous ways with sexuality all the way to uh, rewarding the god with uh, alcohol and grain because all those things would help their lives prosper, they believe. So someone who is just so far away from what a Jewish person was and she comes the text says her daughter her young daughter had an unclean spirit just an aside the daughter had a spirit the spirit didn't have her you know when they started using the word possession in translations in the Bible after the exorcist came out in the 1970s. She had an unclean spirit. Jesus, will you cast it out? She, the text shows that she humbly fell at his feet, asking him. And Jesus says, those terrible, hard words, woman, it is not right to take the bread that belongs to the children. And he's talking about the children of Israel. And throw it to the dogs. Jesus, the, and the woman responds. Notice she didn't overreact and get all upset. I think that's what we need to hear in our society more than any, anything. Do not overreact to things. Uh, talk civilly with people even when they insult you. And she said to Jesus, Ah, but the children, they dropped scraps on the floor. 
that we dogs are able to eat up. Give me a crumb, Jesus. Give me a crumb. Did Jesus do that to test her? And if it is a testing, it's sort of a cruel thing to do. See if she had faith? Or did the woman teach Jesus something? You'll have to decide. It depends on your Christology. The woman, Jesus used the word for children, technon. It refers to biological children. When the woman responded back to Jesus, she uses a different word for children. Translated children in our text. Tadion. Tadion are children that are not only biological children, but even the slaves and the servants and the children of the servants. To show that she had a more inclusive understanding. And it's almost as if Jesus was going, oh, I've been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that hasn't been going too well. And now, I find even the Gentiles need God's grace, are starving for God's grace, want God's grace. So what does that mean for us? We talked about uh, the traditional way of looking at this, or some people consider it the Christian traditional way that Jesus was testing the woman's faith and uh, they, that can be troubling because here a woman comes at a heartfelt moment at a low moment and Jesus is testing her or Jesus just not realize how open God was to everyone in giving them God's grace In our culture, and it seems like things have really become, uh, really we've all become more aware and it's almost a crisis in our country, the awareness of racial problems. Uh, from Ferguson and Black Lives Matter to Baltimore to a traffic stop in Texas to the horrific events at Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, to pickups driving up and down streets with the Confederate flag on them. Issues of race. Jesus would tell us what Norman Rockwell tried to tell us in that painting. God's grace is for everyone the meaning of this woman, this experience she had. The second thing is, what faith this woman had. Even if you think you're a dog, and other people in society think you're a dog, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. It matters what God thinks of you. You may know the name, Heather Whitestone. In 1995, I think it was 1995, she became Miss America. Isn't that something? But she was told when she was born, she was deaf, partially deaf. And she was told by her mother, or her mother was told, send her to a school for the deaf and forget about her. She'll be able to get maybe a third grade education at best. And the mother wouldn't put up with that. She says, no, there's more my daughter can do. Made it all the way to become Miss America in 1995. And in her little hometown, there's a picture that says, Uh, 
Paula White, Heather Whitestone. It says Heather Whitestone. Picture of Heather Whitestone. She was told she would never amount to anything. Thankfully, she didn't hear. This is a story about faith. All you need to worry about is God loves you and cares for you. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We 
Let us pray to the Lord of all creation, from whom comes life and work and purpose. Almighty God, when you formed us lovingly out of the dust of the earth, you breathed into us the breath of life and gave us work and purpose for living. We place to ask. Through our work, you made us co-creators with you, shaping the world in which we live. You enrich the world. By our labor, we find direction and purpose. For providing varieties of work and for blessing us by our labor. For those who plow the field and those who make the plow, for farmers and farm workers, for steel workers and machinists, for those who work with their hands and those who move the earth. For those who tend to the sick and those who seek new cures, for doctors and nurses, for scientists and technicians, for those who keep notes and those who transcribe. For those who think and those who create, for inventors and explorers, for artists and musicians, for those who write books and those who entertain. For those who work in offices and those who work in warehouses, for secretaries and receptionists, for stalkers and bookkeepers, for those who market products and for those who move them. We give you thanks, O oh Lord. For those who inspire our minds and those who motivate us, for teachers and preachers, for public servants and religious servants, for those who help the poor and those who work with our children. For those whose labor is tidiness and cleanliness, for janitors and sanitary workers, for dry cleaners and maids, for those who produce cleaning products and those who use them. We give you thanks, O Lord. For those who sail the waves and those who fly the skies, for captains and attendants, for astronauts and deep sea divers, for those who chart and those who navigate. You bless us all with skills and gifts for labor. Look kindly upon the unemployed and the disabled. Send your healing to the sick, especially to Katie Brady, Linda Bashir, Bud Brown, Karen Clee, Jeff Dykeman, Karen Gallette, Cindy Jones, Dustin Jones, Kelby Jones, Jim Lampy, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Lynn Peterson, John Reynolds, Florence Stilwell, Ron Stiltner, Kyle Timberberg, Richard Roken, Logan Young, and Wayne Meyer. Are there any others? O oh God, we remember all who have gone before us and give thanks for their faith and their work. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Tiffany Giles, Roy Freeberg, Jack Lakey, Greg Robinson, and Kayla Wooten. Give health to the sick, hope to the bereaved. Keep us from laboring only for greed. Make us loving and responsible in all that we do. Creator Lord, you are the source of all wisdom and purpose. You are the blessing of those who labor. Be with us in our labor to guide and govern our world. Give all men and women work that embraces human dignity and bonds us to one another. Give us pride in our work, a fair return for our labor, and joy in knowing that our work finds its source in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Merciful God, the grains of wheat scattered upon the hills gathered together become one bread. So let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you welcome us to your table and satisfy our deepest hunger and thirst. By your gifts of word and holy meal, strengthen us to take up the cross as we go about our callings in this world, following after Jesus Christ, our servant Lord. A couple of big things happening next week. Actually, during the week, there's a special conference on impacting poverty called Focus on Faith by the um, Council of Churches of the Ozarks. It starts at 7.30 a.m. and le ends at 12.30 a.m. I realize that's a big time commitment, but I need someone to go and represent Messiah Lutheran Church because I cannot. Um, I'll be at my brother's funeral, so I cannot be there. So if you can go, you get a free breakfast, and you get a free lunch. So um, let me know. Also next week, Saturday, we have God's Work, Our Hands going on. Big deal. You'll see sign-up sheets, and David will even take more uh, volunteers. The other thing is, next Sunday is Rally Day, and uh, that'll be a big deal, followed by a potluck lunch. So uh, plan to attend. Receive this benediction. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take. The love of God that gives us courage and strength and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us.